What's up? Welcome! Welcome back to another video. For today's video, I am going to be talking about goal setting. Now this isn't strictly like fitness related, but it is very fitness related. What? So a couple of years ago was when I started goal setting and like this might sound kind of weird because it kind of sounds like a weird, <laughs> what are we even talking about? If you don't goal set already, then it kind of sounds weird. That's what I'm trying to say. A couple of years ago was when I started goal setting and that was when I started actually achieving my goals. Sounds simple, but hardly anybody does it. So I posted an Instagram and I got you guys to write down your goals and I got such a big response. So thank you if you commented and it's kind of good because they kind of all fit into like a few different categories. So if I don't do yours, it probably relates to one that I have mentioned in this video. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go through how I make goals and then I'm gonna go through some examples and show you how I would tackle those. So I make goals all the time and I literally mean all the time and some of these goals are really big goals and some of them are much smaller goals. So the first thing that you're gonna do is create two lists. One is a one year goal list and two is a five year goal list and you have to write these down like physically write them not in your phone physically write them down. If you have ever read any articles or studies on goal setting then you will know that people who write down goals are more likely to accomplish them than people who don't. Now there are two things to remember when you are writing down your goals. Number one is that they have to be specific so they have to have an end. So things like eat healthier, it doesn't really belong on a goal list in my opinion. How can you achieve that? Like when do you decide that you've achieved that goal? It's really unclear. So think about why you want to eat healthier. Do you want to be a certain body fat percentage or do you want to run a certain distance in a certain time? Those are specific goals and those are measurable when you reach them. Number two, the second rule when writing down goals is to write things in the positive form. Now I don't know if many other people do this but this is something that I definitely try and do and I try and do it when I talk, when I think as well. So instead of writing lose 10 kilos, you want to write I will weigh 60 kilos. You know what I mean? It's like affirming the goal rather than putting a negative on the current. Does that make sense? Okay, so those are the only two rules. Be specific and write in the positive form. So after you've written down your goals, there's only one more thing that I do before I start executing them and putting them into action and that is to break them down into smaller goals or I like to call them to do's. I constantly have to do lists like I have to do lists everywhere. I actually have a book. Yeah, I'm gonna show you it. It's called a list a day 2019 every day it has like the date and then a space for your to-do list. I don't know how well you can see that and then at the end of each week it has a section for your goals for next week. First I'll break them down into like broad to-do's and then I'll break those down into things I can do each day. So that probably doesn't really mean a lot without an example. So a while back, one of my goals was to start an online business. So when I decided to do this, I knew that for an online business, you really need three things. You need a product, you need a website, and you need advertising or some sort of client base. So when it comes to a business, you probably already have a product. So I'm not gonna break that down because that's gonna be very specific to each person but once you've got that you've got your website so I would split up this to do into really really small easy steps things like buy a domain set up hosting with a web provider start a business Instagram page and Facebook page hire a web designer or if you're like me learn how to do it yourself get a business email on the go so all of those are tiny tasks that do not seem difficult or scary in the slightest but all of them put together add up to you accomplishing that goal so going back to the Instagram post that I put up I have chosen a few of my favorite comments for different reasons. So there were quite a few people who commented that they wanted to compete in their first bikini competition. So this is obviously right up my street and I really like that as a goal because it definitely has like a clear end. And with this one, breaking it down into steps is definitely possible, but at the same time, it's one of these things that you just have to do. You just have to decide that you're doing it. So a few super important steps in my opinion would be to hire a coach, especially if it's your first show, you're gonna wanna break it into your training, your diet, your posing, and your sort of admin 
stuff. So stuff involving the show day, your bikini, your tan, your hair, your makeup, all the things like that. I like to think of every little thing and just make sure it's all there so I can work through it like strategically and feel super organized because y'all know I love organization. Squat 100 kilos, not bothered about reps, just once is enough. So getting a new one rep max in a squat is such a good goal and such an easy goal to execute. You just need to keep going with it. You can squat one rep at 70 kilos. There is no reason why in a few months time you'll not be able to squat 100 kilos. So the way that I would do this is write out a table, write down the week, like week number one, week number two, three, four, five, and so on, and write your squat weight for that week. I personally wouldn't do a one rep max every single week. So one rep max is the heaviest possible weight that you can lift for one rep. So my squat one rep max is probably like 120 or 130, but I could probably squat 100 for like 10. So with safety in mind and the health of your joints, I would stick at like 10 reps. Find a fairly heavy weight that you can get 10 reps with and add 5 kilos. See if you can get 10. If you can't, go back to that weight next week. If you can, add another 5 kilos and so on and so on and eventually you'll start to approach that 100 kilos and then I have no doubt that you'll be able to bang that on and get one good rep out. And then you'll want to get it for 10 anyway, you'll start a new goal, so. To become a WBFF pro. I love it, I love it, I love it. You want to become a WBFF pro, so to do that you need to enter an amateur show with a physique strong enough that they want to award you a pro card. Some people think that if you win you get a pro card, it's not necessarily the case. I have seen winners who haven't got them. If somebody wins but they don't think they are ready to compete as a pro, they won't give them a pro card. So winning doesn't guarantee you one, but having a pro deserving physique does. So steps, compete in a show, just do it. Compete in a show and get feedback. Ask them what you need to do better and take that feedback back to your coach and work your ass off and go and earn that pro card. Do a pull up. This is really similar to the squat goal, but I brought it up because so many people message me asking me how to do a pull up. And I just want to say, if you want to do a pull up, then do pull ups. Loads of people are like, oh, should I do some like lat pull downs? Should I do some rows and like strengthen my back? And like, yeah, that's all great. But the pull up itself is a very specific movement. And I know people who can do more pull ups than me, but they can't lat pull down like half the way that I can lat pull down. So they're not the same thing. So if you want to do a pull up, then do pull-ups. Either use an assist machine, use a resistance band, or do my favorite, which is negative pull-ups. So in a negative pull-up, you will grab the bar and like jump yourself up to the top and then lower yourself down as slowly as you can. Aim for like four or five seconds if you can, at least on the first few, and then as you get more tired, they'll probably get less controlled. Keep doing these and you will, A, you'll be really sore and eventually you'll be able to get the positive part. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and it is actually from a really good friend of mine, Lauren, and she wrote to read 50 books this year. And I love this one so much that I am going to do it as well. And I'll tell you how I'm gonna do it. I am going to cheat. No, I'm going to listen to 50 books. I'm not gonna read them because I physically do not have enough time in my day unless I sacrifice something else and I just don't want to. I do spend a lot of my time walking and driving. So in those times, I'm going to listen to audiobooks. You can download an app called Audible. It's brilliant. You pay like a monthly subscription. It's like the same price as Netflix or less, I'm not sure. And you get one free book a month. So you're basically getting like a book for six pounds. And if you don't get a book that month, then you can, it like adds up. So you don't like lose that book. You Next month you'll have two books. Best thing about this is you can listen to them at like 1.5 or 1.25 speed so it means that the book instead of lasting like four hours it'll last like one and a half like three hours <laughs> i don't know if that maths is right but like a lot less i'm gonna do that so thank you for the inspiration lauren Okay you guys, I did do another video on goals quite recently but I think this one was pretty different so I hope that you enjoyed it and that you took something away from it. I really, really encourage everybody to just set big, big goals because really what have you got to lose? Think about you in terms of the entire world and the entire universe, like you were so small, so insignificant that you might as well dream freaking big and do some cool shit even if people are going to laugh at you or think that you're stupid or whatever, like 
who cares? People definitely thought that I was stupid when I started doing what I do now, and now they don't. Well, maybe they do, I don't know, but. So do you, do what you love, and dream big. Okay, bye.